My story has not changed, and I have further backed up testimony with hundreds of pages of documents and oral and written testimony. Hunter and his associates provided access for wealthy, wealthy foreign individuals located in Ukraine, Romania, and China in exchange for money to enrich a well-known political family. I want to tell you that there is more than enough evidence to support the continued investigative efforts of the congressional committees engaged in a review of my claims. Witness testimony, documents, and actual events such as a failed plea agreement have proven our disclosures were accurate. Blockbuster. IRS whistleblowers Joseph Ziegler and Gary Shapley speaking after their closed-door testimony before the House Ways and Means Committee yesterday. Both men giving the committee new data showing then-Vice President Biden used aliases to send and receive at least 327 emails from Hunter Biden and his accountant, Eric Schwerin, over nine years. 54 emails directly between Joe Biden and Hunter's business partners. This timeline from the committee shows email activity between Schwerin and Biden jumped just around Biden's trip to the Ukraine. Five emails exchanged in three days before the June 2014 Ukraine trip, then another 27 emails before Joe Biden returned to Ukraine that November. Joining me right now is Florida Congressman Greg Stubbe, a member of the House Ways and Means Committee. Congressman, thanks very much for being here. What Thank can you, you tell us about this latest bombshell? What did you learn from the whistleblowers yesterday? Well, we learned more in building on the things that they've disclosed to us previously. The first thing is the claim from the White House that Joe Biden had a complete wall of his son's business dealing is an absolute complete lie. You just annotated the 327 emails that Joe Biden was involved in with Hunter Biden, with his business associates, with Eric Schwering. Some of those emails were just between the vice president and Eric Schwering, uh, all from alias email addresses. Why would you be doing that uh, if there was something of an official nature that they were doing. On top of that, you have testimony that is building upon the fact that they received, the Hunter Biden, the family, the, the family businesses received money from a Chinese Communist Party, a Chinese energy company, and then from information that we received two days ago from Chair Comer in the Oversight Committee, where they released information, that same LLC, Awaska, Awaska he, Joe Biden himself received money from that same company that they received money from the Chinese Communist Party and energy companies. So it's building upon the facts and evidence that these whistleblowers have brought to Congress from the very beginning and showing to the American people there is a, a treasure trove of evidence to show that Joe Biden was involved in his family's business dealings. How much money do you expect the Biden family has taken in so far? And do you have specific policy changes that you believe he made uh, as a reason that he got paid? So 24 million is what we, we know for a fact right now that the Biden family received uh, from these different foreign business dealings. And one of them that, that I, I highlighted in the committee, unfortunately, it wasn't open to the public, that I, I talked about Burisma uh, was $6.7 million that the Biden family received from Burisma, millions of dollars, all to take out that prosecutor, which you have Joe Biden on tape yeah. bragging about the fact that he withheld a billion dollars in money from the United States it was supposed to go to the Ukraine until they fired the prosecutor. And some of the evidence that was given from the whistleblowers yesterday yeah. was emails congratulating one another on accomplishing what they were paid to do. Unbelievable. Here's Amber Duke. Well, not to mention that the former vice president bragged about the fact that he was able to make that policy change in Burisma as well. What are the chances of us getting to see what's actually in these emails? Are you all trying to get the content of these documents? So some of the emails, because he was CCing people in the vice president's office, are at the National Archives. Now that we have these, which we've only had for about a week, uh, we've reached out to obviously the National Archives to get copies of all these emails. But of course, they're going to slow walk that. Uh, they've been slow walking all of the Republicans' requests for correspondence. Yeah. Uh, so that's probably going to take some time, and they're going to do whatever they can to slow walk that. The emails on the private side uh, were so long ago that the companies, Gmail and other, that have those, if we subpoena subpoenaed that information, they likely won't have that at this point. Well, I mean, that's the thing. We see all the subpoenas that you're sending out, but they're blowing them off. The Judiciary no. Oversight and House Ways and Means Committee released an interim staff report accusing the Department of Justice of giving Hunter Biden special treatment. They say the DOJ allowed statute of limitations on certain charges to run out. 
They're accusing them of withholding evidence from investigators, all while tipping off Hunter's defense counsel about pending search warrants. Louisiana Senator John Kennedy pressed FBI Director Christopher Wray on this yesterday. Uh, and the way that they, the Bureau handled the Hunter Biden laptop story as well, right before the 2020 election. Watch this. Mm -hmm. Why didn't the FBI just say, hey, the, 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 the laptop's real. The FBI cannot, especially in a time like that, be talking about an ongoing investigation. And we have to be very careful about what we can say, especially in the middle of uh, an election season. <laughs> so then just uh, allow lies to permeate so that your yep. guy wins the election? Is that, is that the strategy? Yeah, that's their strategy. That's uh, uh, the deep state at work right there, uh, and there's proof of it. Uh, and one of the other interesting things to build on this that the whistleblowers talked about, um, there were some questions about Tony Bobolinsky, and the whistleblowers yesterday said, I asked him, I said, was there people in the DOJ that would not allow you to interview him? Because obviously, based on what he had said uh, on Fox, there was information about that he had of Hunter's business dealings, his dad being involved, Biden being involved, and the whistleblowers yesterday under oath testified that the DOJ specifically told them that they could not interview Tony Bobolinsky even though they wanted to, to to further their own investigation where the evidence was leading. Why them. not? So you have active steps. We know why. We have active steps of the DOJ not allowing them to interview witnesses that would be detrimental to uh, uh, to Joe Biden and his family. Wow. Here's Monica Crowley. Yeah, Congressman, great to see you. So, you know, there are no shady international business transactions for the Biden family without Joe Biden in high office. So can you talk to us a little bit about potential changes to American policy that came as a result of these kinds of massive payments from places like China and Ukraine? Yeah, I mean, you talked about Burisma. We want to know about China because the first day that Joe Biden walked into the White House, he canceled the China initiative. Right. Was that at uh, Xi Jinping, Jinping's? Uh, uh, did, did Xi Jinping ask him to do it? Yeah, well, of course, um, you have a completely corrupted White House because of payments that have been made from the Chinese Communist Party to his family. So we absolutely need to step up enforcement of this. We need to step okay. up the fact that people shouldn't be able to get money from foreign countries, especially if they're in elected office or their family members. Meanwhile, you've got policy that is failing all over the place. The wide open border among them, Customs and Border Patrol yep. sources told Fox that there were more than 10,000 migrant encounters on Sunday and Monday of this week. Two days, nearly 170 Chinese nationals crossed into San Diego, as well uh, as uh, the FBI director, Ray, warned that the likelihood of a terrorist attack on U.S. soil is now at an all-time high. Watch this. I'm where all the threats, or so many of the threats, are all elevated, all at exactly the same time. So... Blinking red lights analogy about 9-11. All the lights were blinking red before 9-11. Apparently, obviously, all of us missed it. Would you say that there's multiple blinking red lights out there? I see blinking lights everywhere I turn. Congressman, what can you tell us about the prospect of a terrorist attack on U.S. soil? We've had hundreds of known terrorists that have been apprehended at the southern border. This administration won't tell us if they've sent them back or released them. We've had tens of thousands of Chinese Communist Party individuals, tens of thousands of Russians, Turkey, people from Iraq, people from Iran coming into our country from the southern border. It's because of his open border policies, he's putting our country at risk. Unbelievable. Congressman, we're going to be watching your work on this. Thanks very much for joining us this morning.